Carnegie Mellon University, Leonard Gelfin Center presents Computer Hardware, a series where we'll be talking about how different computer hardware components work and taking apart two older laptops as well. This Apple MacBook is the first. Ooh. And the second is this Toshiba satellite. Ooh. Please do not attempt to take apart any computers at home. Adult supervision and permission is required. If you have adult supervision, please remember to shut down and disconnect any power supplies first. Finally, taking apart a laptop can void the warranty, so please be aware of that. Now for the main event, RAM. RAM, or random access memory, makes computers run faster by temporarily storing information that you're currently using and making it accessible in an instant. If your computer is running a bit slow on any given day, it could be because all of the available RAM is being used. One common explanation for this is that updates are running in the background or that there are multiple applications open. Although, if your computer had to go back to your hard drive instead of using RAM to run everything simultaneously, things would slow down significantly. To speed up your computer, the easiest upgrade is to add some more RAM. On my Apple laptop, it's easy to remove the stick of RAM. This one happens to be DDR2 RAM, and it's 8 gigs. For the Toshiba, it's missing. Given that this computer was in the recycle pile, someone probably took out the RAM and put it in another laptop prior to discarding it. Since my own video exports were failing due to lack of memory, I decided to upgrade my own RAM from 16 gigs to 32 gigs. As you can see, it's pretty simple and all that's needed is a screwdriver to make the change. The RAM that I'm upgrading here is DDR4 RAM, which stands for Double Data Rate 4, with 4 being the fourth generation of this specific type of RAM. DDR RAM is the most common type of RAM, but there's also GDDR for Graphics DDR. GDDR, which is currently on the sixth generation, is usually on the video or graphics card itself. After upgrading my RAM, I can see that on average, I'm using about eight gigs of RAM while programs such as MS Outlook, MS Word, a web browser, and Adobe Premiere Pro are open, running, and saving. When I begin to export a video in Premiere Pro now, it jumps up to almost 16 gigs of RAM used. With the increased capacity, now I can successfully export videos and multitask a little bit. The RAM that I installed is also DIMM, or Dual Inline Memory Module RAM. Unlike the RAM of the past, this is an upgrade from SIM, or Single Inline Memory Module. Essentially, DIMM allows for RAM cores or ranks and connectors to be on both sides, shown in this example here. This means increased capacity with the added benefit of only needing to install one at a time as opposed to two as it was with SIM RAM. One interesting thing to note as well is that DIMMs consume less power than SIMs. Comparatively then, RAM is like your own short-term memory. However, on average, humans can only remember up to seven things on a list, and RAM is way more powerful than that seven item list. Just as humans can forget, your RAM does too. If you lose power prior to saving your work, for example, this is one very good reason why it's important to save often, because I can think of several times that this has happened to me. So RAM is only useful if there's power to it. Once the computer has been powered off, it loses all its stored information and each session will begin new and blank again. How fast is RAM now? Well, let's think back to our hard drives episode and specifically our solid state drives, which have the fastest transfer rate of up to 750 megabytes per second. For this comparison example, the RAM that I upgraded to earlier has a transfer rate of up to 19,200 megabytes per second. This all sounds pretty fast until you look at the specs for other types of DDR4 RAM, which have transfer rates of up to 35,200 megabytes per second and beyond. That's all we have for you today, so we hope you enjoyed this video all about RAM. 
Stay tuned for more computer hardware episodes, and please be sure to check the links below. Thanks, and see you next time!